we now know how a C matrix acts on vectors. It rotates them about an angle equal to the argument of lambda and scales them by a factor equal to the modulus of lambda. Furthermore, we know that every C matrix has complex eigenvalues. However, although every cow is a beast, not every beast is a cow. We have sheep and, sheep and goat, etc., you know. Our cow is a C matrix and our beasts are matrices A with complex eigenvalues. And this video will see where the C matrix hid is hidden in any matrix A with complex eigenvalues. So let us start out with this matrix over here, 2, 1, minus 2, 0. And let's compute the eigenvalues, just to see that they are in fact complex. So I take the determinant, 2 minus lambda minus lambda minus 2, 1, set it equal to 0. Then we find 2 minus lambda times minus lambda over here, minus minus 2 times 1, so plus 2 equals 0. So lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 2 equals 0. And we can uh, take out the lambda minus 1 squared plus 1 equals 0, and we find the lambda, lambda equals 1 plus or minus i. So in fact, we have here a matrix A with complex eigenvalues. However, the matrix A is certainly not a C matrix, because the elements on the diagonal are not the same, and over here off diagonal is also wrong. So the matrix A is definitely not a C matrix. So where is C? Over here is C. Take matrix P, given over here, 1, 1, 1, 0. You don't know yet why to take exactly this P, we'll see that later. But let's take this P for a moment and compute P inverse A times P. So P inverse over here, interchange the 1 and the 0, put minuses in front of the 1's over there and divide by the determinant which happens to be equal to minus 1, a times p. Uh, compute the first product with those, we get a minus 1, with those we get minus 2, plus 1, also minus 1, those ones give me 0, and minus 1 times 2 equals 2. And then, don't forget the minus sign, compute the full product, we get minus 1, 0 in the product with 1, 1, use minus 1 with an additional minus sign, 1, in a product minus 1, 2 and 1, 1, minus 1 plus 2 equals 1 with the additional minus sign, a minus 1. That in a product minus 1 plus 0 minus 1 with the additional minus sign, a plus 1, and finally the last in a product, those ones, minus 1 plus 2 equals minus 1, with the additional minus sign equals 1. So there's our matrix C. As you see, A itself is not a scaling rotation matrix, but if we compute P inverse AP, we find a scaling ma rotation matrix C. In other words, A itself is not a scaling rotation matrix, but A is similar to a scaling rotation matrix. A equals P, C inverse. How can we find such a C in general? Well, we have a theory which tells us how to do it, which is summarized over here. If A is a real 2 by 2 matrix, with eigenvalue lambda, lambda equals e plus A plus B i, and I want a real complex eigenvalue, so that's why we need to be not equal to zero, so we need real complex eigenvalues, let V be the corresponding eigenvector, corresponding to the lambda. How can we find the C and the P? Well, we know then A equals P, C, P inverse. So A might not be a C matrix, but A is always similar to a scaling rotation matrix, where C can be found using the eigenvalue lambda, the A is over there and the B and the minus B over there, and the P can be built using the eigenvector V 
I have to put the real part of V in the first column of P. I have to put minus the imaginary part of V. That's a bit odd, the minus sign, but you have to put minus the imaginary part of V in the second column. How do we prove this? The proof uses that uh, V is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda, and you just have to check that A times P equals P times C. Well, that's a bit a lengthy uh, and cumbersome exercise, which we will defer to a separate video. So for now, we can know how to compute a matrix C, whichever A we have is complex eigenvalues.